Hello and welcome to Take Time. I am your host, Patrick Marlette, and let's continue our conversation on the Casio Oceanus. Now, I already mentioned this over on the gram, but I could not be more impressed with this watch. Never mind the quality of its high polished bits or the grade of its components, this watch is remarkable due to the 5235 movement featured inside its titanium build. If you wanted accuracy, it doesn't get better than a radio controlled automatic timekeeper, which is precisely what this is. Now, before I kick off our part two in-depth review on the Casio Oceanus here, of course, starting with the bad and then moving on to the good before giving my final verdict on the review item, I'd like to send another special thanks out to Glenn for sending this our way. Not only for the part one unboxing and first impression, but this in-depth review. Glenn is a viewer and Patreon backer and a great supporter of the show. So thank you so much for sending this my way to share with our audience here. Now, before I continue with this video, I'll encourage you to watch our part one unboxing and first impression on this watch if you haven't already to get an idea of what the consumer packaging looks like. But to continue our conversation here, I'd like to go over some of the basic functions of this watch so you know how the Casio Oceanus operates. This is an atomic clock. That means it's accurate to the second. It doesn't get much better than this. Now you can adjust your local time by pulling out the crown to the one position and setting it to your local city. Uh, in our instance here, I've set it to New York. If you can see that up at the top, it'll say NYC and it auto adjusts the date and time by resetting it placing it at the zero position. However, when the crown is out, we can adjust for daylight saving or standard time or adjust our time manually by pushing this to a clock button. And no worries, this steel prong isn't going to damage the titanium button here. But if we were to push this in and hold it, it will adjust from auto to manual to daylight saving. Uh, however, I'm gonna leave it on auto for us as this makes the most sense. It's just easier this way to let the watch guide the time itself. Now our four o'clock button lets us know whether our latest sync receive was successful. Um, we know it is accurate to our current time. However, because I was dawdling with that two o'clock button, it will state no. It is accurate to our current time, but if you want to make sure that you receive more signals in the future automatically, you can pull out the crown once the four o'clock button is pressed to adjust to say yes or no to that function. We're gonna keep it on yes, so that we'll keep on automatically receiving signals to adjust for our local time. Press the crown in to set that, and we'll go back to our current time. Now those are all of our basic functions. I say basic, uh, they are actually uh, something you will definitely need to consult a manual for. But once you get a grip of how this watch works, it's actually pretty simple. It's a set and forget sort of deal. Now our watch is made of TIC titanium, TIC being titanium carbide coating. It has a dual curved sapphire crystal with AR coating. And if you notice on the screen that blue ring around the edges of the sapphire crystal, that is not the coating. It's actually just an accent ring to complement the color tone of the markers on the dial. Um, our AR coating is actually clear and provides really great viewing angles all around the watch. The 5235 module inside has a battery that boasts a seven month battery life once fully charged. And by the way, if you're wondering, the tough movement inside this watch is actually solar powered, although the dial gives no indication that there's any such solar panel under it. It can be purchased for around $558 from online retailers such as Seiya Japan. Not a sponsor, but they should be. Whew. Okay, now let's move on to the review of our Casio Oceanus here. And of course, at the end of our video, I'm gonna compare the finishing of this watch to our Grand Seiko here, as it is claimed that this is made in the same factory as the Grand Seiko timepieces and should have the same level of detailing as a Grand Seiko. Now, I'd love to discuss whether that's true or not, but let's go over a few of this watch's shortcomings first. Now, my first bad note in regards to the Oceanus here is the integrated bracelet. I don't dislike integrated bracelets, but this didn't need to be integrated. I'd argue it would have been better to have it fitted with titanium end links to allow the consumer an opportunity to switch this onto a leather strap. 
but such is not the case. And it's a shame because I bet this would look amazing on a variety of leather straps. As a matter of fact, there's holes drilled out in the lugs to easily remove the bracelet, but what would you be removing it for? Now, I'm sure you can cut up a leather strap to fit between the lugs here, but that's just a little too much work for this consumer. With high quality polishing, you get something that is inherently a smudge magnet. Now you should expect that if you own any polished watch, but it's especially noticeable here. What with the double beveled edges and the chamfered bezel itself being entirely high polished titanium, you're going to expect smudges on a regular basis. Lastly, this was a viewer mentioned complaint in our part one video, and I'd like to echo his thoughts here. The tough movement text on the dial, it's, uh, it's over at the six o'clock position. And as elegant as this watch is, the text tough movement over at the six o'clock just throws off the dial. It's not needed. Casio, let's get rid of this in our next model range. Though I think you should be proud of the movement inside of this watch, Casio, I don't think you need to be advertising it on the dial face. It throws off the look entirely. Now, so far as our good notes are concerned, this watch is incredible. For the price, you're really not gonna find a better executed watch, hands down. If you wanted accuracy, this is the perfect timekeeper. If you wanted looks, this is an excellent everyday piece, equally comfortable under a suit or dressed down in a t-shirt and jeans. This is, this is perfect. The titanium is light and incredibly comfortable on the wrists. It's also completely silent. Sometimes with hollow links, you'll get a jingle jangle as you wear your watch, such is not the case here. Uh, each one of these links is solid uh, to my understanding. And if they're not, they've done a really good job of muting the sound of this bracelet on the wrist. And that's all very fortunate because you can't replace this bracelet. Uh, thank goodness they did a good job on the execution of not only the design of it, but how it wears on your wrist. Aside from those bad notes I mentioned earlier, all of the design choices were great here. I love the blue accent ring around the crystal. I love the blue of the seconds hand that matches the dial face. The textures of this case are gorgeous. The micro fine brushing contrasting that high polish is what makes that polish even more special. And that's usually what I say to people when they ask me about my Grand Seiko. It's not really the Zeratsu polishing that's so impressive. It's how it contrasts the beautiful microfine brush strokes of my Grand Seiko. And this watch has much that same effect. Now, before I get to my verdict, I'd love to provide you guys with a wrist shot. And then of course, I wanna discuss how this watch compares to my Grand Seiko. Oh, and sizing this for the wrist was actually very simple. There's only two micro adjustments on the clasp here, but it does feature a series of whole and half links. So sizing it was relatively easy. This is a push pin system with collars. The collar goes into the center link. You just push the pin out, make sure you don't lose the collar, replace that in the center link, push it back in. I took out two whole links and one half link, and this is what it looks like on a seven and a quarter inch wrist for all of your admirers. And when you are going to admire it, it's gonna look a little something like this. It's fortunate that I'm a bracelet guy because a watch like this that wears so well on a bracelet would likely never come off the bracelet, integrated or otherwise. But here is the watch on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. It's really fantastic. The profile just works so well with that bracelet on the wrist. It's a fantastic looking watch. You know, not just the level of detailing, but the, again, design cues that went into this. I just love how unique this case looks. It's just a very, very handsome watch. No complaints whatsoever. And if you like accurate timepieces, well, again, it doesn't get much better. Now your standard test to show off the Zeratsu polishing on a Grand Seiko watch is to have the watch placed against a flat surface reflecting lovely kanji lettering. Now, I'm not necessarily gonna provide you the kanji lettering test, but I will show you some reflection images now. So what makes the Zeratsu finishing special is the mirror-like quality to its finishing. 
Though you may have heard the word distortionless thrown around in regards to Zeratsu finishing, that's not what we're looking for here. And as a matter of fact, it's kind of difficult to accomplish because most surfaces of your watch are going to be curved to some extent. So you will get distortion. What we want is a polish that provides perfect clearness in its reflection. Now, I think our Grand Seiko here checks out. So far as the Casio is concerned, if it said Grand Seiko on the dial, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Now, is it true Zeratsu finishing? Who cares? Does it compete with my Grand Seiko? Definitely. And for that, it deserves a lot of praise. Now, I don't care for marketing terms as selling points. I prefer to judge the end product based on firsthand experience, how it makes me feel, and if I enjoy looking at it. Not only for the time, but for its craftsmanship. If you have $600 to spend and your criteria is time accuracy and beauty, buy the Casio Oceanus. It just makes sense. Glenn, you are going to love this timepiece. Thank you so much for providing me this experience as well as our audience here on Take Time. I generally don't look at Casio for their high-end or mid-tier models. I normally think of Casio in concerns to G-Shock, but this is something special. Now, if you found this video enlightening or in the least entertaining, feel free to hit that like button. It looks a whole lot like this. If you have friends, forums, or groups that were interested in picking up a Casio Oceanus, share this video with them first to get another consumer's opinion on the piece. Also, if you're new to the channel, well, welcome. I do videos like this two or more times a week. So if watch content is your thing, feel free to slam that subscribe button. And while you're down there, you can hit the bell icon just next to that. So you'd receive my videos precisely when they air. Again, my name is Patrick Marlad and thank you for the time.